Welcome everyone to our lecture on scientific drawing. We're actually starting today with a picture from Ernst Haeckel, who is one of my favorite scientific illustrators, particularly because he showed some love to our invertebrates. So the first question you might be asking is, when we have all of these photos and videos and camera technology available at our fingertips, why do we even care about scientific drawing anymore? Well, first of all, not everyone used to be able to have cameras and computers and, you know, images of things were not readily available. So for people like Lewis and Clark, they actually did drawings of the organisms they observed on their expeditions so they could share with other people what these new organisms looked like. Darwin drew the beaks of the finches he was looking at so he could show other scientists what these finches looked like because he didn't have cameras to take pictures of them, right? So sometimes it's because we need to show a picture to someone else of what something looks like. Sometimes um, scientific drawing is about heightening our own observations. So these drawings, for example, were done by Teddy Roosevelt um, because he wanted to get a closer look at things. And sometimes, like the previous drawing by Ernst Haeckel and this one by James Audubon, they serve multiple functions. Not only do they show people who could never have seen these organisms before what these birds, for example, look like, but um, sometimes they're just aesthetically beautiful. All right. so how do we do scientific drawing? And I will tell you that even if you are call yourself not a good artist, you can do scientific drawing, right? So let's talk about how. Let's say I wanted to do a scientific drawing of this hand, okay? I might look at this hand and I say, okay, I know how to draw a hand. Hand, scientific drawing done. And you'd all say, no, that's not right, okay? So the first rule of scientific drawing is to draw what you see. My drawing here was not, I wasn't looking at that other hand while I was drawing it. So rule number one, draw what you see. Okay, so let's try that again. So I'm gonna try a little bit harder. I'll make sure I'm looking at the hand that I'm drawing as I am trying to draw it. And I am not the world's best artist, okay? All right, so this is a much better start than the last one. However, if I wanna start trying to add detail to this, I am quickly going to run out of room. So if our first rule is to draw what you see, our second rule of scientific drawing is to use the whole space. So let's try this one more time. All right, so I'm going to draw this hand, and I'm going to use the whole space to do it. I'm going to look at the hand while I'm drawing. And you'll notice it's not perfect, but since it is larger and I was looking at the hand while I was doing it, it's a lot better, okay? so. This might give someone an idea of the outline of the hand, but the best way to make your drawing look scientific is to include detail, okay? So I'm gonna just start including simple detail like the lines on this hand. All right, so we can add some of the texture to our drawings. And it's not always easy to draw on a whiteboard while you are looking off to the side. But we're gonna do our best. Okay, so even by adding lines on the hand, this one looks a lot more like our original example, okay? Other things we could add, we could add some fingernail, but then I would need to point out like, hey, this is a fingernail, not some weird growth on there, okay? So you can label, if, especially if it's scientific, label the anatomical parts, like the palm of the hand. Um, let's say you also wanted to tell someone what color it was. So you could add color like this could be tan, this might be beige, could be smooth, so you can label some textures, okay? Um, so that's our fourth rule, is you're going to label the structures, the colors, the textures, any features that you see on your scientific drawing. Now let's say you wanted to give some really close up detail, okay? Let's say we wanted to draw a fingerprint. If I tried to draw it on this finger, I would quickly run out of room. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna draw a circle here, like on a map, and then basically zoom out. And then I would look at the pinky right here and I would try to draw the fingerprint that I see. So that's a way we can zoom in and show more detail without making our whole drawing gigantic. These little zoom outs we call insets, all right? So it's another thing you can use. And then lastly, if you um, are able to observe something in real life, you can include a scale, something that tells us how big it is. Right? I can't do this with this one since I'm not actually seeing this hand in real life, but you can do it with the specimens that you observe. 
So that's how we do scientific drawing. That's what you're going to practice in your labs. So just as a review, how we do scientific drawing. Rule number one is to draw what you see, not what you imagine or think. Rule number two is to use the whole space. Number three is to include lots of detail. Four is to label structures, colors, textures, features, and whatever else you can label on there. Five is to use insets. Six is to include a scale. And now, for our SDT invertebrate biology, do part one or your sponge observations of your sponge, hydra, and planaria lab.